So recently, a friend of mine has asked where we went in Costa Rica and asked if I could send some details over. I've decided to make a video, uh, she's going to regret asking me now, uh, of everywhere I went and uh, give you a rough idea of what we did and what it was like there. Now we went with our two and a half year old daughter which did limit the activities but there was still plenty to do and it was very child friendly overall. Costa Rica is a very small country and very easy to travel around. There's a diverse range of activities from wildlife, sightseeing and adventurous activities such as canyoning. It was very easy to book tours through your hotel or even just pull up at the place and someone will come out and find you. The longest journey we did was about four hours long with most of them being between half an hour to an hour. If you do want to go anywhere in the jungle or go to certain waterfalls, we highly recommend getting a 4x4 because our car was pushing it to the limit and we went in the dry season. With that said, let's get started. So I'm going to start off with a very quick overview of where we went and then carry on from there. Feel free to pause the video if necessary and links to all the places will be in the description below. Okay, so this is Costa Rica. It's found in Central America. Uh, we flew over there by plane and landed in San Jose. We then drove to Carrera and stayed there three nights. Plenty of animal activities to do there. We then went past Jaco Beach. You either love it or you hate it. We didn't love it. It's a big tourist destination. We then went to Leo Ranch and then we went to Manuel Antonio National Park where there's again more animal activities. Then we went to uh, Nayaka Waterfall and then we went down to Zerepi. From Terepi we went to Drake's Bay and we stayed there the night. In Drake's Bay you can go to the Corcovado National Park by boat and then back again. We stayed the night and then we had to get the ferry back to Serepi. Now we'd managed to arrange to uh, stay with a local family just outside Marie Luisa, but there were mountains in the way, so we had to drive around. So we drove around to get the Ducanet Lodge on the way to break up the drive and then we went round to the little hamlet just outside Marie Luisa. He recommended we go down the east coast so from there we went to Cahid. Ah. We stayed there for three nights and then we popped into Puerto Viejo de Talamanza and then headed up to Volcano Hirazu and then back to San Jose. Now San Jose really wasn't what we were expecting. It was a lot smaller, it wasn't as built up as we thought it might be and for us there wasn't a great interest in things to do there. Finding the hotel was easy and there's people that wait in the streets to help you park. It felt a bit weird but it's perfectly legit. We also used this time to get ourselves a local SIM card. They did have some really beautiful uh, local parks and things to look at, and they did have museums, but for us, that's not really what we wanted to do. We wanted to see animals. Now, we didn't want to stay in San Jose too long, so we decided the next night to go down to Carrera. On the way to Carrera, basically a few minutes just outside, there's a place called Crocodile Bridge, where you can see crocodiles from a bridge. Whilst there, a man approached us and managed to sell us a crocodile boat trip, where you can see crocodiles from a boat. You can also see birds, and birds getting eaten by crocodiles. This was an unlucky pelican. Well, these were just lucky pelicans. The crocodiles were usually huge, and the men would get out and grab their tails every now and then. Okay, so we then went to our hotel, which is here, right off the beach, which is here. Now, this was really great for us, because it meant every day we could go out to the beach, I could fly my drone, and my daughter loved it. She even did her little happy dance. So this is why we stayed there for so long. We also went to a national park, which was called Carrera National Park. Uh, from here we could see lots of different animals. It was a really good tour. And we went on a private tour with just the three of us. I think it was about $60. We saw lots of different animals, uh, toucans, monkeys, and things like bats and agoutis. We continued our tour along the west coast and stopped at Jacko Beach. Jacko is well known by tourists with its lovely beach and souvenir shops, but it wasn't to our taste. Oh, Jacko, whatever you're called. It's lovely to meet you. Smoothies are not cool. We didn't like the smoothies there either. Our next big location was Manuel Antonio National Park. We decided to stay further away because at Rancho Leon we knew there was a playground and in the town there were no pathways so it wasn't as safe for our daughter. Out of all the national parks, Manuel Antonio was our least favourite. It was absolutely rammed with tourists and uh, we were sharing a telescope and it was hard to see any of the animals. It did, however, have a lovely beach, which the whole family enjoyed, and it was a nice place to relax. Afterwards, we decided to carry on our journey and went to Nyaka Waterfall. This was a really beautiful waterfall, and it's a great place to take photos and make people jealous on Facebook. You can also go for a swim, and it's a beautiful view, and you can stay there for quite a while. What we didn't know is that it was a four kilometre walk there and a four kilometre walk back. With a small child, this is quite difficult. But luckily, because we're British, we love to moan, and it gives us something to moan about. So if you choose to visit, just remember to bring some water with you. 
The walk back to be fair is quite pleasant, and we found some eggs on the way, which adds a little bit of fun to the holiday. Next, where we went to Sirepi, we didn't stay there, we just got the ferry straight to Drake Bay. The reason we wanted to go to Drake Bay is because it gives us an easy access to get to Corcovado National Park, which is a place where you're most likely to see tapir, and this is the only place in Costa Rica where you can see all four types of monkeys. We stayed at this two-star hotel called Drake Bay Paradise Lodge. The lady in charge was lovely, although I've forgotten her name. There was no hot water, and the Wi-Fi was accessible in the communal area. There's plenty of other options you can do there, including whale watching and night tours. And if you want to give any a go, just ask any of the staff there and they'll be happy to point you in the right direction. So we managed to book a tour to uh, Corcovado National Park. Oh, isn't that a lovely picture? Problem solved. Whilst there we saw a huge diversity of animals, from peccaries to small rare birds, birds of prey like the common hawk, ants, tamanduas, and uh, probably our favourite would have been the tapir which was the main reason we went there. We thought we'd only get a glimpse of them sleeping because they're nocturnal, but actually we saw three tapir all walking around during the daytime. And this baby tapir got so close to me, it actually made me nervous. So from here, we went back to Drake Bay, stayed the night, and then got the boat back to Sirepi, or whatever it's called. We then decided to go to Maria Luisa. With the mountains in the way, we went around and we stopped at Toucanet Lodge to break up the journey. To get to Toucanet Lodge, we had to pass through the foggy mountains. They made for some hairy driving with wet, windy roads, low visibility, and steep mountain drops to your side. But apart from that, it was good fun. Despite going to some of the cloud forests, we didn't see much there, although we only stopped briefly. So Toucanet Lodge was the most expensive place we stayed, but it did have the most amazing food, the most amazing views, and the most amazing accommodation. Leslie, the man in charge, made us feel very comfortable, and he was amazing too. The lodge is very popular with bird watchers and photographers too. It had two connects living on site, and it was surrounded by hundreds of hummingbirds. Next was our four hour journey to a small hamlet just outside Marie Louisa. Although to do something like this won't be an option to most tourists, it was a great experience and well worth looking into if this sort of thing interests you. We stayed with a family in an authentic house and learnt about how they lived. We had fresh roasted cacao beans, which they used to make chocolates. And they also had a jungle in their back garden. This was the home to a group of howler monkeys and lots of other really cool animals, including red-eyed tree frogs, the largest breed of damselfly in the world, and loads of other cool snakes and reptiles. It was the only place where I've ever been where a bat's flown in through the front door, circled the room, flown over a frog, past a gecko, and then flown back out whilst our host didn't even bat an eyelid and just carried on talking. What a great experience. The roads were really badly made, and this was the time we needed a 4x4 more than ever. But the scariest thing was that we had to cross a live railway bridge to get there. True story. Whilst there and we said we wanted to relax for the rest of the holiday, our host suggested we go to Cahuita. I don't know how to say that. This is found along the east coast, and is a great place to relax. We stayed at Cabernet's Vas, which had a nice swimming pool, a lovely room with air conditioning. It was near lots of great bars and restaurants, and home to Cajita National Park, which was surrounded by blue seas and had great wildlife. Just beware of thieves. Apart from when they're relaxing too. This was one of the best views I got from the slough the whole holiday, and it was a great place just to go for a quick wander. Where you buy entry for the day, you could go and come back as many times as you liked, and look at lots of really cool animals. At our hotel, we found this elephant beetle. She was very friendly and great to see. From Cuajita, Puerto Viejo de Talamansa, or however you pronounce it, was a great place to visit too, just to get some souvenirs and even have a little swim. On the way back, we found this sloth stranded by the roadside, so we went to help it. By the time we got there, some people were already helping him. So I decided to take a picture and crop them out and put my watermark on it. Lovely. After, we headed back up the east coast and then we went to Volcano Irazu. Uh, this was a pretty cool space, although we didn't spend as much time as we thought we would there. It is a lovely site, but there wasn't a terrible amount going on. The best part about it was we did actually see a Kuwati raid in the bin. It was our first time ever seeing a wild Kuwati, so it was really exciting for us. We particularly loved it because it absolutely terrified this lady and stole her coffee. He went on to get papped by some tourists, and then I decided to have a bin selfie. From here it was about 30 minutes to go to San Jose, where we decided to go to Zoo Avenue before catching the aeroplane. Overall, we were impressed with the zoo. It was more of a rehabilitation centre, or a place where animals stay if they can't be reintroduced into the wild. And mainly had native animals there. 
After that we headed back to Thrifty, which is where we hired our car from, who then tried to charge us £265 for a mark on the side of the car. The only thing was, this mark was there when we got it. Right here. So after two hours of arguing and then blackmailing to ground our flight, we paid the $265 and then spent two months making sure we got the money back, which we did eventually. Overall we found it a great holiday with plenty to do, being such a small country it kept the travel times very short, there was plenty of great wildlife to see and a lot to do and if you just wanted to relax there's perfect places to do that too. If you're more adventurous you can take the sky and gyro sculptures, you can do canyoning and lots of other really fun activities. The locals are lovely and really helpful and we highly recommend it as a holiday destination. That's all for this video, I hope to see you in the next one.